Hey guys, I want to talk today about survival tools, in particular edge items, blades, tomahawks, hatchets, machetes, pocket knives, multi-tools, you name it. So what I want to talk about is uh, kind of a, a brief over, no not a brief, it's going to be long guys, let's face it, um, an overview about these tools and what to look for when you're buying them and, and how to get started. And this is a a video completely for beginners um, looking to get into bushcrafting or wilderness survival or whatever. So let's start by saying there's a lot of bad information out there, guys. First of all, you have to bear in mind the internet is full of advertisements that are hidden as reviews. Companies go out, they review their own products, they put it out there, and it's really nothing more than an advertisement. It's the same thing as gun magazines. You know, they have advertisements disguised as reviews all the time and, and another thing guys being someone who runs a channel there's hardly a week goes by that someone doesn't offer free gear to me but the exchange for that gear is that I do the review that they want and I don't do that on this channel so bear in mind a lot of YouTube information is bought and paid for people giving away free gear to people who are willing to basically hoard their channels out the other last piece, beware of those uh, top five lists. They're just old, tired lists that people have put out. And, you know, they're really popular and they draw a lot of attention. But in reality, those kind of people who make them are just regurgitating information that's been out in, like, forums and stuff like that for years. They're really not coming up with anything new. And to be honest, most of us don't have enough gear to really effectively make a top five list. You know, yeah, okay, so I own 30, 40 knives, but come on. Can I really make a top five list when there's thousands and thousands of knives out there? So many things I've never even tried. Stay away. Those top five lists are really just, you know, they're, they're done by people who, you know, the, the quality of the information there is not always the best. Let's just put it that way. I tend to like to get my information from certain individuals on YouTube that I trust, forums in forums you can see a lot of good information and see what people are posting and get a gauge as to their level of experience and all that so be careful guys when you're doing research remember a lot of information is company sponsored reviews and tired regurgitated information by people looking to make money everybody's making money on the internet these websites are making money through advertisements they're trying to draw you in and how do they draw you in Top five survival knives, top five axes, top five hatchets. It draws people in. So, enough of a rant, let's go. People always tell me, where do I get started? Well, I'll tell you where to get started. Pocket knife. You don't need to spend a fortune. $30 will get you a good pocket knife. $50 will get you a great pocket knife. $15 will get you a pretty good pocket knife. So, I could tell you, I could list top five pocket knives that I own, I can do all that, but I'm wasting your time. What do you want to look for? Well, number one, do a little research on blade steels. Folding knives typically tend to be stainless steel. Um, there's a couple different locking mechanisms. Look into those. Read about them. But I think the primary thing with the folding knife is looking into the blade steel. Make sure your blade steel is something that you want. If it's not listed, it's probably garbage. Stay away from the cheap 420 stainless and stuff like that. They're soft. They don't hold an edge. There's a lot of good budget steels out there, like 440C. This uh, 8CR13MOV that Spyderco uses. There's a lot of decent, inexpensive steels out there. You don't need to spend a fortune. Typically, I could tell you, I like my pocket knives. I like either liner lock or frame lock. I don't like those fancy new locking mechanisms out there. I don't like them. I don't trust them. <coughs> I like flat handle scales because I think they sit in the pockets and pouches and webbing better that way. But this is all stuff you learn through experience. But the most important thing, find a good pocket knife with good solid construction made of a good quality steel. A lot of good companies out there. Kershaw makes some good budget ones. Spyderco makes some good budget ones. Spyderco also makes some really good high-end stuff too. Um, oftentimes the best thing to do is read up on the brands on the forums and see what you like and what you use. You know, 
in the end, the world of folding knives, there's a lot to learn. Start simple, something you can handle, and you're not going to be afraid to use it. You know, so that it's in a price range that makes you comfortable to use it. From there, you got your pocket knife, you've mastered it, you've learned a little bit about blade steels, hopefully. Where do I go next? I tell people, get yourself a bushcraft knife. Now, nine times out of ten, I'm going to tell you, get a Mora. They're 15 bucks, they're great knives, they're available everywhere, and you can really uh, do so much with them. Now, you can go up from there. If you don't want to spend 15 you can go up, and there's a lot of good knives up there in that $30 to $50 range. And there's a lot of great knives out there in that 200 to $300 range, but up to you. A bushcraft knife is something you're going to use for carving wood, cutting small things. You know, it's not something for processing firewood. You're going to use this maybe to gut an animal, maybe carve some tent, sta uh, some tent stakes, make a spoon, things like that. You're not going to be using it for heavy duty things. And going back to the pocket knife. Pocket knife typically is going to be used for small carving, cutting things like paracord and all that. It's not a heavy use item. So where you run into a lot of problems is when people use a pocket knife like they should use a fixed blade bushcraft knife. Every tool has its own use. Stick with it. Don't use a pocket knife like an axe. You know. From there, where do I go next? I always tell people next, invest in a good hatchet. Um, a good hatchet goes a long way. Learn how to use it. There's a lot of good people on YouTube. If you search how to use a hatchet, how to do that, they will show you how to safely use a hatchet. Hatchets are way more dangerous than an axe. One, they can fly out of your hand. You can drop them on your foot, cut your foot, bury this thing into your shin or your thigh. They can be very, very dangerous. Learn how to use them properly. Hatchets are easy, though. For the most part, hatchets are pretty inexpensive, and you don't need to spend a fortune because, really, you know, they're kind of a small, light-duty tool. You know, you can actually get by quite well on a uh, $10 Harbor Freight hatchet. The steel's not the best, and it's not going to last you long because that steel is going to wear down pretty quick because it is pretty soft, but you can get away a long time. You could go with something like one of these... Uh, SOG Tomahawks, you know, same thing. They're a good tool, they're decent, but they got that, you know, polymer handle that can break on you. You know, you can go up from there. You can spend $100 on a, a Grand Sforza or a Wetterlings hatchet. But do you need to? No. There's a lot of good hatchets out there in that $20 to $50 range. Once again, make sure you're getting something that's a good carbon steel, typically. I know, like, these uh, Tomahawks and all that are stainless, but... Typically with my hatchets, you want, I want something that's a carbon steel, has a good thin edge to it that will do good chopping, has a good solid handle, and uh, works well. And trust me guys, you know, I know the gear snobs out there always say get a Grand Sforza, get a Weatherlings, but that's that same regurgitated stuff out there. The marbles, um, axes that are made in El Salvador are good, the Condor axes are good. There's a lot of good uh, American-made stuff out there, like these uh, East Wing and Council Tool that you can use as well, that are really good and uh, American-made. Your hatchet is something you're going to primarily use to process wood. You're going to be making kindling, taking branches off, maybe making a shelter, those kind of tasks. The tasks that you can't do with your small little bushcraft knife. They're bigger, they're heavier duty. You can also use them. They're typically a little more multi-purpose, and if they do have the hammer pull on the back, you can use for hammering things. A good hatchet goes a long, long way. Or you can also go with a smaller sized axe, something like a, a boy's axe or a, a small forest axe. You can do a little more uh, wood processing with them, but of course you're getting into something a little more expensive and something that's a little harder to bring with you. Now, next I tell people, get yourself a good machete. And a machete is also a very dangerous item. It's something that you can very easily swing and hit yourself in the leg, hit yourself in the foot. You know, they can break and snap, especially if you buy those cheap Walmart ones. You, you know, there's a lot of potential to get hurt on a machete. And machetes can go from anywhere from like 
this little cold steel uh, like 12 inch Bowie machete all the way up to this big gigantic cold steel like chopper that's like 22 inches and like two and a half pounds. There's a whole variety in between them, but a good machete you can actually get for $20. You don't need to spend a fortune. Um, do not buy cheap garbage six to ten dollar machetes. Do not do it. Spend the money, get a cold steel, get a marbles. The marbles machetes are like fifteen dollars, but they're good carbon steel spring tempered blades that work really good and last a long time. They will not break on you. Other great brands out there like Condor. Condor makes great machetes in that fifty to hundred dollar range. There's a lot of good machetes on the market. Avoid cheap stainless steel, avoid Walmart and cheap Kuglins and things like that. Don't even bother with them. Get a good, decent, I recommend maybe a uh, 14, 16, or 18 inch machete. They're pretty manageable for everyone. Get something that uh, you can baton wood with, so you want something with a, uh, a straight back to it. That you can baton wood. Typically these are gonna be used for clearing brush maybe batoning some wood, light wood, not something heavy or, you know, really hard, you know, batoning softer woods, making kindling, clearing trees, brush. Uh, you can take down small trees with a machete. A lot you can do. You can also use them for carving. You can use them for shaping wood, almost like a, a draw knife. So much you can do with a machete. Just like I said, avoid them. Avoid the cheap ones and you'll be okay. Get a $20 cold steel, a $15 marbles, and you will be set for life. But once again, go on the internet, go on to YouTube, read how to use a machete. You definitely want to know. These can be very dangerous when you use them. They're very easy, and these things can fly, you know, swinging something like this, you can very easily catch yourself in the shin or the thigh if this were to glance off a, uh, a tree. So something you need to be very careful with. The last, um, tool we're going to talk about, of course, is the actual survival knife. Survival knives typically and traditionally are 5 to 10 inches long, usually made of a good carbon steel, even though nowadays some of the, the uh, stainless steels are getting so good that people are tending to go a little more towards the stainless over the uh, carbon steel, but I'm still just sold on the carbon steel. You want something that's a good construction, full tang. You don't want one of those cheap Rambo knives that are held together with a, a, a nut and a bolt. You don't want something with a little tiny pencil thin tang in it. Do some research on knife construction. Start reading, you know, knife construction, search on it, knife steels. Um, carbon steels are pretty simple. There's not, you know, <laughs> they're pretty simple. It's pretty much, they're mostly named for the amount of carbon in them. You know, the amount of carbon changes the number. You can get like the 1055, 1085. Of course, 1085 has more carbon in it, which makes it a harder steel and less, but the carbon also makes it uh, more uh, prone to corrode. So what do you want your survival knife for? Typically survival knife, is like your all-around go-to thing. You can use it for processing game. You can use it for processing small amounts of wood. You can use it for carving, limbing. You can baton wood. Um, you know, you can use it for hunting. There's a lot you can use your knife for. Typically, what I look for in a survival knife, I look for one-piece steel construction. I look for something between five and 10 inches. I tend to go more on that eight to 10 inch side I like the bigger blades for a survival knife. Um, this one here, like this Condor, was like maybe 25 bucks. It's just basically a big hunk of uh, carbon steel with a plastic handle. Works great, takes a lot of abuse. It's a great chopper, and uh, I've seen a lot of use for it. Got my Ontario here, which is like 40 bucks, military style. Great, but it's got kind of a small tang, so I wouldn't use that for uh, hard processing of wood. It could potentially uh, break that tang, but there's a lot of good options out there when it comes to the K-Bars and Ontario's because they are a uh, very old design that's really stood the test of time. You got other things like this Cold Steel uh, Bushman, which is one piece with a hollow handle. Really good. They're like 25 bucks. You can put a survival kit in it. You know, great thing. 
There's all different kinds, all different types. Survival knives, yeah, you can get a cheap one for 20 bucks. There's a lot of decent <coughs> cold seal products out there in that 20 to $30 price range, and they will last you a lifetime. They're made of good carbon steel, and you're saving the money because they're simple designs. Simple blades, they don't have a lot of finishing or processing to them. I mean, car, you know, cold steel, you're pretty much getting a, you know, some of these, you're just getting a blade that they're cutting out, sharpening, and throwing their black uh, paint on it and putting in the store. You know, there's not a lot to them. Now, price-wise, on survival knives can go crazy. People sometimes spend four or $500. Not necessary. You can really get away with that 20 to $50 for a good survival knife. You definitely want something that's going to be durable, that will last, something you can use and never worry about it breaking. That's what I look for in a survival knife. This more will probably never break, but if I use that as a spear tip, that plastic might break. That cold steel Bushman, the odds of that ever breaking are pretty much zero. So I look for durability. I look for a higher contact carbon steel if possible, something with a good spring temper. I look for a good size, good thick blade, something you can really beat on and abuse. That's what I look for. Um, of course, you know, like I said, guys, you don't have to spend a fortune. You can do something like this here. This is a little bushcraft axe I'm putting together off an old uh, shingler's hatchet that I put onto a cheap, you know, like $3 handle. I got maybe $8 invested in it, and it's uh, one hell of a tool. So you can also get away with uh, going with vintage gear. There's a lot of old military surplus knives and all that that are very cheap and very effective. So... You never have to go expensive. It's A lot of that is people trying to sell you things, and you always need to be careful of that. You never need to spend a lot to get something good. You just need to know the market well enough to find the good deals out there. So guys, to reiterate, sum this all up. Be careful of the information you get. Do your own research. Learn about knife steel. Learn about knife construction. There's really only a couple of different ways that knives are put together. It's not a ton of information. <coughs> Learn about axes. Axes are very simple, but very complex at the same time. You can spend an afternoon reading about axes and need to know and learn almost everything you need to know about them. And you'll be able to pick out a much better quality axe for the money after spending a little bit of time reading about them and how they're made. Same thing with any product. Learn how it's made you'll understand it and you can make better choices. Better choices means saving money, which means more gear. And that's the end all goal of almost everyone I know is to buy good gear, use it hard, buy more gear. So I hope you guys enjoyed.